Hello parents, this is Amanda Ripley, Board Certified Behavior Analyst. I hope this video finds you well. With the help of the students working on my team, I plan to teach a little bit more about applied behavior analysis and how it can help teach your child. The first topic we plan to talk about is reinforcement. You have probably already used a lot of reinforcement in the strategies we will talk about today and in later videos in your everyday life. Now it is time to use those strategies in a different way as you work and teach with your child at home. This may feel like a new role, but we are here to help. Reinforcement. What is reinforcement? Doing something for your child that makes the behavior more likely to happen again. This is a way to teach and encourage your child throughout the day and during his or her work. We use reinforcement to help keep children working and following rules. There are three types of positive reinforcement, providing attention, food or drinks, and activities. For attention, this is what you say and do with your child. Saying things like, you are right, it is for, and thank you for using your words or doing things like smiling, looking at your child or providing eye contact, hugs, tickles, and back pats. Another type of reinforcer are things your child likes to eat or drink. You can reinforce a behavior by giving bites of things they like to eat or drink. Some examples are cookies, candy, popcorn, fruit snacks, Kool-Aid, juice, milk, and many others. Another type of reinforcer is engaging in an activity. You can reinforce a behavior by giving time to do something they like to do. Some examples are playing with a toy, going outside to play, playing a game, watching a video or TV. What does this look like? Let's watch an example. In this example, the behavior we are teaching is sitting quietly and working on a math worksheet. This is the behavior we'll reinforce to make it happen again. Let's look at the different examples of reinforcement. First will be attention in the form of praise. Here's your math worksheet, Chloe. Remember that when providing praise to be descriptive and describe specifically what you are reinforcing so the child knows what is expected. Chloe, great job getting to work so fast. You're doing so well. I love how you're sitting. The next example will be food or things you can eat. Offer small bite-sized portions throughout the task when the child is being good. Good job working, Chloe. The third um, is activity. A toy or an activity can be provided when the child is being good during the task for a brief break. Chloe, you're working so hard. Let's take a break with Legos. Great job. My turn. Thanks, Chloe. It can also be helpful to vary reinforcers and use them together to help provide the best reward possible. For example, let's look at providing an activity and praise. Chloe, you've been working so hard. I'm so proud of how well you're sitting and working. Let's take a break with Legos. Great job, Chloe. Use the DISC principle. The DISC principle is a way to remember deprived, immediate, salient, and contingent. But what does all that mean? Deprived. If your child has had a lot of something, snacks, lunch, interactions, then they won't want any more. We need to make sure they are motivated or wanting the item we are using to help them work. One way to make sure your child doesn't get bored of the reinforcer is to give choices of things to earn, different foods, activities, types of attention. Immediate. Provide the reinforcer as soon after the behavior you want to see. The sooner the better. Salient. Make sure the reinforcer is meaningful for your child. Make your praise descriptive. Label the behavior you want to see more of. Some examples. I like how nicely you are sitting and working. Look at how quickly you made your bed. Great work. Thank you for asking for help so politely. Contingent. Provide the reward contingent upon the behavior you want to see more of. Don't give the reward first. 
You want to see the helpful behavior, then give reinforcement. An example, you finished your math worksheet. Awesome job, now you can have a break. Now let's see what this looks like with another role play. More on deprived. This is giving your child a choice in what activity, snack, or type of attention they get that will make the likelihood of the reinforcer strong enough to see the behavior happen again, especially if they've grown tired of a certain reinforcer. In this example, you just ask your child to pick up their shoes and place them by the door. Chloe, great job picking up your shoes and placing them by the door. Do you want to play a game or have a snack? A game? Great. Next, we'll talk about immediacy. You want to give the reinforcer as soon as you see the behavior that you are trying to reinforce in your child. In this scenario, your child has just brushed their teeth without you telling them to. Chloe, great job for brushing your teeth without being told. Awesome. Next is saliency. You want to make sure that your child knows exactly the, what they did correctly and be descriptive. In this scenario, your child used their napkin to wipe their hands instead of their clothes. Wow, Chloe, I'm so proud of you using your napkin instead of your clothes to wipe off your hands. Great work. Last, we'll be talking about contingency. This means that the reinforcement you give is given after the behavior is seen, never before. This way, they have to complete the behavior in order to receive reinforcement. Chloe, great job cleaning your room. Here's a cookie.